What's up guys, today we are hitting legs. Legs is one of those days that just takes a different intensity and just takes a lot of structure and is one of my favorite days to train. And training in this hybrid style where you're mixing lifting and running, there often becomes a lot of confusion. And even for myself, when I first started training in this hybrid style, it was hard to get to a rhythm of how often to train legs, how heavy, um, how much volume should I do? Because when you're running and lifting, your legs are already getting a lot of volume from the miles that you're running. So today I'm gonna clear all those things up. I'm gonna take you through my entire leg workouts. This is something you can add into your program. But before that, I wanna hop into three really important principles that we need to address. We're gonna talk about how heavy you should hit legs, how frequently you should hit legs, and with how much volume should you train your legs. But before we dive into that, guys, we have our July 4th sale going on for our supplement line and our apparel line. So site-wide, we have 25% off. So 25% off our whey protein powder, 25% off our electrolytes, 25% off our entire men's and women's apparel line. So if you wanna stock up on some supplements or get a new gym outfit, go head over to fitgrindformula.com. I'll leave the link in the comments in the description below. If you'd like to support the brand, go check it out. If not, no worries. Like I said, we're doing 25% off through Monday, July 8th. So like I said, I'm gonna take you through the entire workout, but before we hop into that, I wanna go through three really important things. The first thing is overload. And if you're training this hybrid style, if you're still trying to build muscle and trying to build strength, you have to overload. And what I mean by this is you have to get stronger from week to week, but taking it even a step further is I would try and focus on structuring a couple of compound movements, especially towards the beginning of your workout. So choose things like a back squat, a front squat, Bulgarian split squat, a deadlift, a hip thrust, these really big compound movements that you're gonna be able to overload, you're gonna be able to add weight consistently each week because that's what's gonna place the stimulus on your body to keep building muscle. So make sure that you don't lighten things up, make sure that you keep things heavy because if you're running lots of miles and you lighten the weight up and you just get through reps, and you're not really pushing your body to change, what's gonna happen is you're gonna run the risk of losing muscle mass, especially in the lower body. So make sure you keep things heavy, make sure that you are trying to get stronger from week to week and picking at least two to three compound movements each week that you can consistently get stronger and consistently overload in that six to 10 rep range. The second thing is gonna be the amount of volume. So we talked about overload with weight. You can also overload with volume. And what I would do is, you're gonna to have to play around with how much volume you can tolerate. And this may change over time. It might start when you start running, you might be running 10, 15, 20 miles a week and your legs might be constantly wrecked. And that's the way it was for me when I first started running is my legs were just always trashed. It was just different, it was a new stimulus. And then training legs on top of that, I just was really under recovering and I was struggling to recover from all the running and the lifting volume. So assess what you can tolerate and look for ways that you can slowly add volume, you know, adding a couple sets here, a couple sets there, especially as you start to acclimate to the running and the miles that you're doing, you can start to add an overload by adding volume a couple sets at a time. Maybe you're, instead of doing three sets, you're gonna do four sets, or instead of four sets, you're gonna do five sets. You can just slowly add volume and that's another great way that you can overload. And my final thing I wanna talk about before we hop into the workout is the frequency that you're training legs. This is something that I struggled with when I first started training this hybrid style. And if you are new to hybrid training, what I would recommend is you probably should train legs once a week because you're gonna be running 10, 15, 20, maybe even more miles a week. Your legs are gonna constantly be trashed. Over time, you're gonna to start to acclimate. And if you're not in a specific like endurance event, say like a 10K or a half marathon or a marathon or an ultra marathon, or some sort of endurance event that has a specific timeline and a specific date, then maybe you can start to increase your lower body volume or your lower body strength training days to twice a week. You just have to make sure that you're able to recover from all this, the leg volume because at the end of the day, if you're doing too much and you can't recover from it, it's not gonna be positive for you. It's not gonna help you change. It's not gonna help you get better. And your body's just gonna be in this constant state of being broken down. So start off with training lower body once a week if you're feeling okay and you feel like you can recover and you can add a second day in, you could always cut the volume a little bit in those workouts to get the frequency to so train legs twice a week. And then you could slowly add volume like I talked about in step number two. So those are three really important things. And I can speak about this because I struggled with this in the beginning when I started training in this hybrid style, because I'm not somebody that has an extensive background in running. I love strength training. I've been strength training for the past decade plus, and I love it. And that's where my experience comes from. And I've 
more limited experience with running. So when I first started adding a lot of running miles, it was new, my legs were trash. So you need to assess what your program should look like, um, assess your current goals. Maybe you're training for a half marathon or a marathon or some sort of endurance event. You might have to cut some strength training away from your program, but that's okay because it's temporary. Or say that, hey, I just wanna do a little bit of running and I wanna do more strength training, really optimize building muscle then that's where I would recommend trying to strength train twice a week, specifically for the lower body, and try to hit your legs twice a week. That's really gonna optimize your program, give you the stimulus that you need to build muscle, build strength, and keep making progress with your lower body. So, overall legs is very important to train. Obviously having stronger legs is gonna help with your running. Um, it's also gonna help with endurance. So just overall it is very important that you still train your legs. So with that said, Let's hop into the full leg workout. I'm going to talk about the structure. I'll do a voiceover over everything. I just finished my pre-workouts. I'm going to go mix up one scoop of our pink Starburst Fit Grind Electrolyte. I'm going to sip on that throughout the workout. That's something that I always do with my strength training sessions that just helps keep intensity, um, keeps me hydrated, and just make sure that I don't crash towards the end of the workout. So mix up a scoop of those, and let's hop into the workout. So I started this workout off with some pre-exhaustion, which is not something that I always do, but I've been doing lately. And for me, it's more of like getting some blood flow, getting some activation, um, but it's been feeling really great. So I supersetted a leg extension and a leg curl to start with the workouts. Um, this is more isolation, but like I said, for me, what I use this as is a chance to get some good activation in my quads and my hamstrings, get some good blood flow, get a pump. I did four sets on each of these of anywhere from 10 to 12 reps. And what I did was I would start at my lightest weight for my first set and over the course of those four sets, build up to my heaviest set where on both of these on my last set, 10 reps was right about muscle failure. So just kind of slowly building into the workout. And by the end of these four sets, my legs were pumped, had some good blood flow, and I was definitely ready to hop into my first working set. Um, with leg extension leg curls, obviously when I say go heavy, go as heavy as you can with good form. Don't lose the form, make sure you're not using a ton of momentum, make sure that just your quads and your hamstrings are moving the weight. So after that, I went into my first compound movement. So this was a Bulgarian split squat, and these are infamous if you've ever done these before. But I love this movement because one, it's unilateral movement where you can train each leg independently, especially as a runner or training like a hybrid athlete. You are doing lots of different reps. You're doing lots of running and imbalances are something that can definitely happen very easily. So this is a great movement that you can do. I like to do it with the barbell. Um, I'll also do it with dumbbells from time to time. But once you start to get stronger legs, you're going to be able to hold 70, 80, 90, 100 pound dumbbells. So you might as well just load the bar on your back so you don't have to worry about holding it. But with these focusing on putting all the weight on that front leg, you can kind of target different muscle groups depending on what your, your specific goals are. So the closer your stance is, the more quad emphasis this is going to have. The wider the stance goes, the more glute and hamstring emphasis it's going to have. But no matter what you're doing, all three muscles are going to work throughout this one. This one is a tough one. And you might start to realize that you might have an imbalance from right to left leg. And this is a really good one to work on, um, even if you're not squatting on a certain day or doing a deadlift on a certain day. So after three sets of eight of those, went into a leg press. And this was also by itself. So the Bulgarian split squat was by itself. Took about a minute and a half rest in between sets. Leg press is also by itself. I did four sets of eight on these, going heavy. And with this, trying to take about hip stance width and slightly point my toes out. Now, with leg press, there's so many different angles and foot stances that you can do. If you're trying to target your quads a little bit more, what I would do is I would take a really close low stance. If you're trying to train the inside of your leg, so inside quad, adductor, go wider stance, slightly point your toes out. And if you're trying to grow your hamstrings or your glutes, you're gonna move your feet higher on that platform. So again, a lot of variation, but the main thing for me is even though this is an isolation type exercise, still trying to focus on getting stronger from week to week. So I did four sets of eights. Um, and I've been tracking my weight from set from week to week to make sure that I'm continuously getting stronger in the leg press, even though it is a machine. After that, my next superset, I did a barbell Romanian deadlift with a calf raise. RDLs, so working our hamstrings, making sure it would balance and quad to hamstring out where 
leg extensions, leg press, squats, lunges are all very quad dominant. We want to make sure that we're doing more hamstring work and posterior chain work other than just like a leg curl. So working through the RDL, I realized after I recorded this, this angle is terrible. I'm sorry about that, but I'm doing a landmine calf raise. This is a setup that I've been doing, especially as, as you're running more, you want to make sure that you're building stronger calves as well. So what I did was I just used a plate to get a little extra range of motion and I kept it anywhere from 10 to 12 reps, just driving off my calves and squeezing as hard as I could. So overall, these are the six leg exercises that I did in my leg workout. And that's what I want you guys to focus on is we don't have to do 10 leg exercises every single leg workouts, as long as the intensity is there and you're getting stronger from week to week. So pick five to eight movements, get stronger, and you're really gonna watch your legs grow from week to week. All right, so I just finished up that leg workout. I just mixed up a scoop of our whey protein, and then I'm also gonna have a banana. That's a pretty typical post-workout meal for me. Um, just get some carbs, get some protein, get a blend of those, because after your workout, and you can even try this out yourself, if you eat nothing for a couple hours, you're gonna feel like trash. And I know that people used to talk about the anabolic window post-workout, and I don't think that you have to get something in the minute that your workout stops but it does help to get something in within an hour of that workout. So typically what I'll do is I'll have one to two scoops of our whey protein powder, and then I'll also have a piece of fruit right after, and then within an hour of the workout, I'll also do a full meal that has a good lean source of protein and a good carbohydrate source like rice or whole grain breads or even potatoes or sweet potatoes. So something that is just gonna kickstart that recovery, you're gonna feel a lot better by doing so. Overall main takeaways from the workout today is make sure that you overload so that you're trying to get stronger from week to week. Today I used the Bulgarian split squats, um, also used RDLs. I did a little pre-exhaustion today on the leg extension leg curl. That was kind of some activation as well. But make sure that you're just getting stronger from week to week. And even on your isolation exercises, things like leg press or things like calf raises or leg extensions or leg curls or all the isolation work you might do for your legs, you still should try and focus on getting stronger. It's not gonna come as fast and it might only be five pounds at a time, but still focus on getting stronger because that's gonna place the emphasis on your body and the stimulus that you need to build muscle and place that stimulus on your body to repair and grow back stronger. So if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me down in the comment section below. I would love to help out any way that I can whether it's about this specific workout or any other workout or nutrition questions. That's my job, that's what I love to do. I train clients in person and online, and it's definitely one of my passions, and that's a big reason why I do YouTube, is to help more people um, and just to reach more people. And I know the positive impact that fitness has made on my life, and I know the positive impact it's made on my clients, both in person and online. So I just love to help more people and, and have a bigger impact. If you guys would like to go check out our whey protein powder or our electrolytes or pick up a new gym outfit, like I said, we're having a full site-wide 25% off sale, thickerindformula.com. I'll leave the link in the comments in the description below. I appreciate the support. We are going to keep building out this supplement line, so I'm very excited to keep documenting that on YouTube and just keeping you guys filled in. So, like I said, I appreciate the support. The sale will go through Monday at midnight. So don't miss out. It's a chance to stock up. This will be the biggest sale until Black Friday. If you enjoyed the workout, hit that thumbs up button for me, guys. And I'll leave a couple other videos in case you missed these from last week at the top of the screen here next. Make sure you check those out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.